good week. I had a blessed week. Still having a good week. Uh, again, uh, again, I would like to thank God and first of my life, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for giving me another opportunity to come and share the word in front of God's people and Pastor Rick and Open Door and the elders for giving me a, another opportunity to come and share God's word in front of God's holy people. <clears throat> now, I just want to, uh, because it's, it's a, what Pastor Rick said about people not uh, coming to church as far as the, the coronavirus, I was thinking about that in my truck and in my, on my walking into the church, and it's ironic that he spoke on it or said something about it. And it's a, I want to say it, kind of a shame that people listen to the media because the media said you can catch it more in a church than you could if you would go to Walmart or Target or the mall or a shoe place or whatever, but it's something about going to church that you could catch it. And, you know, you, you always got to understand what's that about anyway. It's just an attack that they're trying to use to stop people from going to church. And, and it's pretty much working effectively. But, you know, you understand the situations, the same procedures, the same precautions that you use to go to Walmart and all the other places, use it in church. Same thing, space yourself out, wear your mask if you want to wear your mask. Uh, wash your hands, you should have been washing your hands anyway. <laughs> so that ain't nothing new, I mean, but... Out of, out of all the places that you can catch this virus, church is the most populous place you can catch the virus. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I, I, don't, I don't get it, but, you know, it is what it is. We're living in a day of uncertainty and a day that is against the church. They're going to do everything they can to try to stop the church, but they won't prevail. They won't prevail against the church. But that's that's just something that's, I don't understand how people can miss that many months and stuff. I, I don't understand it. I never understood that about how people can miss church month after month after month after month and I like it don't bother them. It's just so, I don't understand. I still don't understand that. You know, but to each his own. If that's what you want to do, then God be the judge, not me. And uh, the Bible said, "Don't forsake the assembly of together as a matter of some do." So, if you are forsaking the body of Christ, then hey, that's something you have to answer for to God, not not to me. But you have to act, answer that to God. But it is what it is. That's the favorite saying. It is what it is. Nothing you can do about it. You can't make them come. You can't beat them, brow beat them. And, uh, they come when they want to come, I guess. When they're down and out, they'll come. But it's just sad. It's just sad that, you know, that's a sad, that's, that's just sad to me. But you can't allow that to stop you from growing and coming and mingling with your church folk. But we still got a job to do. We still got a work to do. And that's winning people to Christ, leading people to the word of God. So that's enough of that. So what are we going to do tonight? Are we going to do a little subject called God Will Get Your Attention? Uh, I, the saying, I used to say this a lot, God trying to get your attention, God don't try. So I had to stop saying that. I got, you know, it. It's just something that, you know, is always saying, God trying to get your attention. Well, you know, God don't try to get our attention. He will get your attention. <laughs> he don't try. He gets it. Yeah, he always gets people's attention. And that's what we're going to deal with tonight. God will get your attention. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to start in the book of Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. So if you have your Bibles, turn there. While you turn there, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. 
for another day that you've given us. Lord, we just ask that you to give us wisdom and understanding, Father, for your word to go out more clear and more in depth. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> God will get your attention, not trying to get your attention. And that's a phrase that we always use when people have you know, situations in life. We always say, God trying to get your attention. No, God getting their attention. So that's something that I'm training my mind and training my self to say God is getting your attention or God will get your attention because God don't fail. Whether you heed to it or not, he got your attention. <laughs> and that's what we're going to be dealing with today. In Daniel chapter 5, and in Daniel chapter 5, the king did something that made God angry. And it kind of, and God kind of got his attention on some things. <laughs> and the way God got his attention is very hilarious to me because God got a sense of humor. We got a sense of humor. God got a sense of humor. And um, the thing that, that God did, you know, it, it just makes you laugh to think that, oh, we serve a mighty God. God got a way of doing things to get your attention. God, he got a way of knowing how to push your button, knowing what button to push for you to not for your, the same button that he pushed for you and might not be for me. But he know exactly what to do to get your attention. And he knew exactly what to do to get this king's attention. So we're going to be in Daniel chapter 5. And, uh, and then uh, if we have any more time, we'll go to uh, Numbers or Acts. But Daniel chapter 5, and it reads. It said, Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Now, this king, this feast was more like a ball. You know, like, you know, you have a, 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 a big, how, they, how the king have a, a ball and, you know, just uh, like a big old gathering. You know, like the presidential ball that they used to have every year. So it was more like a, a president, I say a presidential ball to get you in, in in tune with what's going on. So it's more like a presidential ball or inaugurational ball or however you want to call it. it was, there was a lot of people at this one particular place. And it said a thousand of his lords. Now this is not counting the, the lords and their wives and all of that. So you have a thousand of, there's a thousand men there, not counting the wives and, you know, all of that. Because they did have wives that, that went with them to this feast or this ball that this king was having. And verse 2, it said Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, he said, commanded to bring the golden and the silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. So now we know that there's more than a thousand people here. Because they're talking about the prince's wives and their concubines. All of them was drinking out of the, the golden vessels and the silver vessels that was the Lord's. You know, and basically, they were making mockery of the things of God. And when it talks about his father, Nebuchadnezzar, it's talking about his grandfather. So Nebuchadnezzar was his grandfather. <clears throat> but it always call him his father. So now we see that in this particular passage that they are in the ball, they're drinking wine and, you know, just doing what they do in balls. Verse 3. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God. So now we see that they're bringing the, the, the vessels that was in the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They took the wine, they started drinking in them. You know. And here's the part where they start making uh, the mockery out of them. He said, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold. Here they're drinking wine 
out of God's vessels, out of God's holy vessels, because these cups were for the priests. The Levitical priests, nobody else could drink out of this but the priests. But here are they having a ball, all the golden vessels, all the silver vessels they brought to this ball. And the people started drinking wine out of them. But not only did they drink wine, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold. They didn't give God things. And of silver, the gods of silver. They put all of this before our God or the God of God, the God of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. They praising all these gods while drinking out of God's holy things. Verse 5. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. Now here's, this is the one that said, fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Now here is the king. Now you can imagine this king probably think he's drunk. He's sitting there, you know, looking like, what is that? You know, the fingers of a man's hand just writing on the plaster of the wall. Now that won't get your attention. What will? It's just the fingers of a man's hand just riding on the wall. And the king probably in his mind, because we, we see strange things. If you, you ever been in the world and was drinking and you get drunk, you start seeing stuff. <laughs> so the king probably thinking in his mind, you know, squinting his eyes, what is that I see? What's that? I'm looking. I see fingers, something riding on the wall. Verse 6. Then the king's countenance was changed. Uh-oh. Now, instead of him being happy because he was in this ball, now the king looking like, what's going on? I might be kind of tipsy, but I ain't that tipsy. I see something right on this wall. And his thoughts troubled him. Uh-oh. So that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. Now, you know what that means when it said the joints of his loins was loose. He used the bathroom. He pee-peed in his clothes. So if God don't have a way of getting your attention, God has a sense of humor. God knew exactly what it was going to take to get this king's attention because he won't pay attention. He didn't listen to his grandfather's advice. He went away from his grandfather's advice. So here he is, and then the Bible said that his knees smoke together. Now, you ever seen when the cartoon, would the, would the baby knees be smoking? His knees are literally shaking together. And he used the bathroom in front of all those people. Hmm. Don't tell me God won't get your attention. He know how to get your attention. So now we see that God has his attention. Verse 7, the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldees, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this right and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now here is the king trying to figure out what can his magicians interpret. Can they interpret this writing on the wall? So he's calling them. He want everybody. But they can't do it. And the reason why they can't do it because they don't have the spirit in them to interpret that. You understand? There's a lot of people that try to interpret the word of God. They interpret the word of God. When the Bible said Jesus is his spouse to us, people interpret that, that crazy thinking. When the Bible says that God, that Mary, or Jesus was born of a virgin and begotten of the Holy Spirit, you know what? People actually think that God had sex with Mary. That's their interpretation. They don't know how to interpret the word of God. So when you got people 
that don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them, they can't interpret the Word of God. So they're going to give you their own interpretation to try to downplay the Word of God, to make Jesus Christ not be who he say he is. There's a lot of stuff that people are interpreting of the word of God that is false. But our people seem to want to believe it. Why? People don't have the spirit of God in them and, and they're trying to interpret it. Verse 8. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the right nor make known to the king the interpretation of They didn't have a clue of what that thing said on that wall. Soothsayers, the bone men, the psychics, the people of the world didn't have a clue. But all this time they've been reading the palms and telling you your future. But now when the king need them the most, they can't give him the interpretation. About like they did Nebuchadnezzar when he had a dream. He dreamed a dream and he forgot his dream. So he called all the soothsayers and all the magicians and told them and asked them and said, tell me what my dream was and give me the interpretation. He said, King, we can't do that mess like that, King. There ain't nobody on this earth that can tell you your dream you forgot and then want to give the interpretation to us. So Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to kill all you. All y'all going to die because y'all ain't doing but y'all ain't doing but tricking people and, and don't y'all not who y'all say y'all are. Then Daniel got whipped of it. So Daniel said, hold up now. We don't want to perish like these magicians and wise men. So he got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego together and said, let's pray to God and ask God to give us the interpretation. Let God give us what King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed. Because we don't want to die like these guys because they about to die. So God gave Daniel the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had and the interpretation of it. Why? Because he prayed to the Most High God. These magicians, these fellows don't pray to nobody but themselves. Verse 9. It said, Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled and his countenance was changed in him and his lords were astonished. They were dumbfounded because they could not understand the writing that was on the wall. They did not know the interpretation of that was on the wall. Just like a lot of people dumbfounded when they read the word of God, they don't understand it. Oh, they dumbfounded. If you don't have the spirit of God in you to understand the word of God, it's his word. And this ain't my word, it's his word. Who's supposed to give you the interpretation of the word of God? Him. Not man. He give you the interpretation. He give you the wisdom. He give you understanding. He give you knowledge. Verse 10. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let, the, let, let thy countenance be changed. So the queen going to tell him about there's a man that can interpret this thing for him. So the queen came in and trying to, you know, uplift her, the, the king. Verse 11. He, she said, there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. <laughs> so she called it the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, which is his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Why? Because God gave it to Daniel. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father, the king I say, thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldees, and soothsayers. Now he's over these ones that you called in. Let's just give him a try. Let's see what he has to say about this stuff. He said, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding and interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentence and dissolving of thoughts, were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Let's call Daniel in because 
He did the same thing to your father, your grandfather. He showed him some things. So let's call this Daniel in to see if he can tell us because he have an excellent spirit in him. Y'all wonder what that excellent spirit is. <laughs> you know what it is. The Holy Spirit that was giving him everything. Verse 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel which art the, of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Judea or Jewry? 14. I have heard of thee that thy, that the spirit of the gods <laughs> is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. So he's kind of telling him, I heard you, 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 you a man of your word. You know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what's going on. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should not read the writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. They have no, no clue, Daniel, of what's on this wall. And it's bothering me. I need to know it. And trust me, if it's plastered in the wall, that means it was a deep cut. The way it can't be erased. It was sitting there in the graven image in the wall. <laughs> the way it ain't going to be erased, it's going to stick. It's going to stay right there. <laughs> Verse 16, listen to what Daniel explained. And, and verse 16, he said, And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretation and dissolve doubt. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and thou shalt be third ruler in the kingdom. Now here he is telling, look, man, I, I'm, I'm going to give you all this stuff now. I'll give you a little bit of money and, you know, make you, <laughs> make you famous or whatever. I just, you know, I need you to read this interpretation on the wall. 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself. I don't need your money. Keep it. And give thy reward to another. I don't need your reward. You keep it. He ain't like, he ain't like these prophets of the day, is he? <laughs> these 2020 prophets would have said, Yeah, give me all that. <laughs> he said in verse 18, 17 he said and yet I will read a writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation he said you, you keep your money you can keep all that you have I will make known to you and I'm going to read it for you king the interpretation you keep your money I, I, I don't need your money hmm. verse 18 O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom. So he's explaining to him what God did for his grandfather. Gave your, gave your father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. 19. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would he slew. This is Nebuchadnezzar. And whom he would keep alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down because God gave it to Nebuchadnezzar to do all this God said in the book of Jeremiah 25 9 Nebuchadnezzar is my servant he doing my bidding 20 but when his heart was lifted up see this is what happened when your heart lifted up and his mind hardened in pride pride just like Satan he was disposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. This is what happened when pride, I, I, look what I built. This is what Nebuchadnezzar said. Look at the kingdom I built. Didn't get God glory. Look what I done, just like Satan. I want to uh, 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 be above the stars of God. I want to be like the most high God. I'm going to be better than God. Pride. Y'all understand? Twenty-one, and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast of the field, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. He was sleeping out there with the oxen and all that other stuff. He said they fed him with grass like oxen, 
and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Now, I'm going to just add this little side note. Don't y'all know they found Saddam Hussein in a hole? <laughs> just like Nebuchadnezzar. It was a type of Nebuchadnezzar, so to speak. They found him in a hole and eating like the oxen, hiding. That's, that was very interesting to me. And you see a type like that in modern day. He said, till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. That means he repented. When it say until he knew, that means he came to his senses. He said, you know what? This God that Daniel served, this is the most high God. This ain't my kingdom. This is his kingdom. He put it to whom he want to give it. That's when he came to his senses. Verse 22. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. He said, you knew all this, but you did not humble your heart before God. Listen to what he tell him. But has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. Y'all making mockery of God. And thou hast praised the gods of silver. This is what you doing. And gold of brass, iron, wood and stone which see not nor hear nor know these things don't know jack but you praise them you drinking out of the vessels of god praising other gods putting them before our god so then you led it down to the line to it he said and the god in whose hand thy breath is, God holds your breath in his hand, and whose are thy ways has thou not glorified. You have not glorified God since you had the kingdom. Wow. Verse 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. I don't understand what he just said. He said, after you done praised the God of all your gods, drinking out of God's vessels and stuff like that, oh, it was fine as long as you weren't doing it out of God's holy vessels. But when you started uh, making mockery of God and praising your gods while drinking out of God's holy thing, he said, then, why? Because you don't respect God. That's just like somebody coming in here and while the preacher's preaching and standing up cursing out the preacher and disrespecting the house of God. You don't have to worry about that. So it won't be long. You can't disrespect God and his things and think you're going to get away with it. That don't happen like that. It never happened like that. Never will happen like that. That's Ananias and Sapphira. That's New Testament. They disrespect the things of God. And this is Old Testament, but that was New Testament. They lied to the Holy Spirit. You ain't lied to Peter. You lied to God. There's a difference. You can lie to me all day long. I'd lie to me. <laughs> but when you lie to God, when God already know the truth, just tell the truth. Lord, you right. <laughs> I did it. You might have mercy. You might have grace extended. But lying to God, how are you going to lie to God and then expect mercy and grace? Just tell them the truth. Verse 25. And this is the writing that was written, many, many tickle Euphrates. This is the interpretation of the thing. He said, many. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Your day's numbered, though. Your kingdom's gone. Ain't no coming back from it. Tinkle. Thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. It's time for you, you, you buy, basically, 
you're about to die. Death is at the door. It's coming. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. So your kingdom going to be divided. It's going to be given to the Medes and the Persians. All because of what you did. Your, you got prideful, you lifted up, you took God's holy things, brought them in amongst all the old, your, the ball that you was having, the feast that you were having, having a good time and won't even thinking about God. But you disrespected God and brought in those holy things that were for the priests. And you brought them in and disrespected God. Verse 29. He said, Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom. And in that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Didn't take God long, did it? But God know how to get your attention. Now let's go to Acts and close it. Acts chapter 9. Now this is one fella that God got his attention because he made havoc of the church. He brought the church and uh, bum rushed the church and fought the church and <laughs> did everything to the church, against the church, and then started working for the church. Why? Because God had a plan for him. God had to turn him around and get him straight. Chapter 9, verse 1 in Acts. It says, Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughtered against the disciples of the Lord and went into the high priest and desired him letters to Damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of this way, what way? The way of Christ. Rather they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. So here is Paul on his way to Damascus. Going to get women, going to get the men. He didn't care who they was. I'm going to get them. I'm going to bring them back bound. Because they preaching this way. I don't know nothing about this way they preaching. They preaching against God. So here is Paul. He was going in the houses to get them. He didn't care. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. So he on his way. Remember when I told y'all weeks ago that God had people in every city. You cannot overthrow the church. Why well, he got people in every city? They on their way to Damascus to get Christians, to get followers of Christ. Listen to what I said. And suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. Uh-oh. God got his attention. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice said unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why are you persecuting me, Saul? And he said, listen now, what's how humble he got. Who art thou, Lord? <laughs> so he recognized, oh, there's, something, there's a greater power than I got in me. Something ain't right here. Who art thou, Lord? So that you recognize that somebody is greater than you. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Is it hard for thee to kick against the prick? It's hard for you to kick against that prick or you're going to hurt yourself. Paul, that's what he said. You're going to hurt yourself. And he was trembling. Y'all understand what trembling means? The same, I'm pretty sure it probably was the same trembling that King had. <laughs> but he didn't say he used the bathroom in his clothes. But He said, and astonished and said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? So if you're trembling, so, uh, you ain't going to say, well, what you want me to do now, God? No, you're trembling. So you got fear in you because you recognize there's a power higher than you that you can't do nothing about. God know how to get your attention. And the Lord said to him, arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men that the men which journeyed with him stood speechless. Hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Here they looking around like, what is that? They didn't understand the words that was spoken to Paul. But they knew Paul was talking to somebody. They heard something. 
And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. Why? He's blind. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Here they lead him by the hand. Why? He can't see. And they brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. He was fasting. He was fasting and praying because he just had an encounter. He don't know what to do. only thing he knows is the same people he was going to get from preaching this way about Jesus, he was struck down on the way to Damascus. And the same Jesus came to him that he was going to, 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 to fight against. The same Jesus, the same God. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus. Name Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. I'm here, Lord. See the difference of the tone? I'm here, Lord. What you need? Paul, who art thou, Lord? It's a difference. When you're a believer, you can say, Who am I? Who? Lord, I'm here. If you're not a believer, you'll be shaken. Verse 11. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarshish. For behold, he prayed. Here is God telling him, Saul prayed. God knew how to get his attention. Verse 12. And have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. So he's seen all this in a vision. Paul did. Now listen to what Ananias said now. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man. Lord, you show how much evil. Now listen, this is a disciple of the Lord telling God, telling Christ, this man is evil. He said, how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Lord, you see all the evil this man is doing to your saints at Jerusalem? And you want me to go lay hands? I'm going to lay some hands on him when I see him. <laughs> but it ain't going to be no hands. He said, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. Anybody that call on your name, he has authority from the chief priest to bring them there, put them in prison. Oh, this man evil. So this is Ananias telling the Lord. Now, it ain't like the Lord didn't know. <laughs> the Lord told Saul, Paul, what to do. Did he not tell him exactly where to go and what to do? So listen to how God explained to Ananias. He's talking back to him. But the Lord said to him, go thy way. You go ahead now. Don't question me. <laughs> For he is a chosen vessel. God said he was chosen. He's chosen. I chose him. I wanted him. I want him to do something. You don't have nothing to do with this, Ananias. You're going to do what I asked you to do. He said he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. He said he's going to bear my name amongst basically all people. Wherever he go, he's going to bear my name. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. God said, I'm going to show him. Now, he's going to suffer some things for my name's sake. I'm going to show him what he's going to suffer. 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, you see the, now you see the difference. He was evil before. But after God explained it to him, Christ had to explain to Ananias what was going on. So now Ananias can call him what? A brother. Y'all understand? So when God revealed to you that that person is changed, you can call him a brother. <laughs> so now he's a brother to Ananias. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
I got to lay my hands on you that you receive your sight and you be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes as they had been scales, and he received sight forwith and arose and was baptized. He arose and he went and got baptized. And he had received meat and he was strengthened. And then was saw certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. In verse 20 in closing. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. It didn't take him long. <laughs> when you have an experience like that, it don't take you long. <laughs> it don't take you long to seek God when an experience like that. Because God has a way of getting your attention. You understand? Because God got my attention when I was out there doing what I wanted to do, big and bad. And how did God get my attention? <laughs> Through a dream. Had no idea, won't study God. I mean, I listened to preachers on, you know, radio, TV, and, you know, just listen to them because, you know, that's what we was raised at. So, you know, every now and again you listen to them and, you, you know, you kind of let that sink in and try to live the best you know how, but you won't, you're not saved, but you still, you know, you respect, you respect your mom and your daddy and your grandmother enough that they, they put it in you as you was a child. But he got my attention through a dream. Dead sleep. Won't study God. And I was out hanging with my, my boys and doing what I, you know, doing what teenagers do, doing teenager things. Everybody's a teenager. You know what teenagers do. Bad stuff. <laughs> went home, went to sleep. Lo and behold, had a dream. And it wasn't a bad, terrifying